Thanks for joining us today. I'm Elizabeth Woolsey. Be sure to keep your eye on the bottom of our screen for all the latest closings and delays. It'll run throughout the newscast. Sex, money, and UofL basketball. The woman who claims she provided prostitutes for players and recruits says she has no reason to lie. The Jefferson County Sheriff's Office told us they got an anonymous call from inside the building of an active shooter at about 340 this afternoon. Several new developments today. We want to bring in WDRB Sports Rick Bozich, who just spoke with Willard. So Rick, tell us more about why he is leaving the team. Now the investigation will turn to who was the anonymous caller who said there was an active shooter. That call went to Jefferson County Sheriff's Department. They alerted us. JCTC sent out uh, an alert at about 339 today. So now the investigation will turn to finding out who made that call about a shooter inside the building. This situation is pretty bad no matter where you're yeah. traveling from southern Indiana down to Elizabethtown. We want to check in with WDRB's Emily Muir. She is in Floyd County right now where there is a travel advisory in effect. And I saw you tweeting earlier. It's hard to talk because your face is frozen and hard to, <laughs> to tweet because your fingers are frozen. The setting for the Hermitage Grand Gala is on a picturesque horse farm in Goshen, Kentucky. The historic thoroughbred breeding farm, Hermitage Farm. Once you walk inside the tent, this is what you see. When ESPN needed an expert to weigh in on the scandal, it turned to this man, WDRB sports journalist Eric Crawford. He appeared on the Outside the Line special earlier this afternoon and joins us now. So, Eric, how is this a game changer? ESPN's report that five former UFL players and recruits admitted to the sexual encounters in Minardi Hall. We are following developing news on the campus of Jefferson Community and Technical College. WDRB's Rachel Collier is live near the campus after a report of a violent situation. The snow days are piling up for local students and in just the last hour, JCPS joined the long list of districts calling school off for the fifth day in a row. And just looking at Dr. Donna Hargan's Twitter account right now, she's the JCPS superintendent and she tweeted earlier, plan on a full school day tomorrow. Do you think there is anything more to this than what it sounds like on the surface? We haven't had it bad enough this week. Now we're looking at another winter storm heading our way, bringing more snow, freezing rain. Chief Meteorologist Mark Weinberg has the latest on this. And we have Travis Ragsdale on the way to the scene as well, and he is tweeting that a police spokesperson is heading to 9th and Broadway for a briefing. So we will keep you updated on this situation. Again, as Rachel said, the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office got an anonymous call from inside the building at Jefferson Community and Technical College downtown at 8th and Chestnut of an active shooter inside the building. An anonymous call. They have been scouring the building and have not found anything yet. Lots of police and emergency responders on the campus now and we'll keep you posted on the developments there. So keep it right here. Well, deadly shootings at two different colleges today. The most recent Recent at Texas Southern University, one person has died. Officials say two people were shot around 1130 this morning in a student housing complex. The school was put on lockdown and classes were canceled for today. There's no word yet on the condition of the second person shot. Police have a possible suspect in custody. And all of this happening after another shooting in Arizona. One student killed in the overnight incident. Diane Gallagher explains what led to a freshman pulling the trigger. But there's one team that battles winter's worst, showing up in a JCPS classroom that's been transformed into a zoo. We are dealing with the cold and we do have some school delays for tomorrow. You'll find those at the bottom of your screen throughout the newscast. Chief Meteorologist Mark Weinberg joins us now and we are on track to set some cold records. Hate to hear that. Well, prosecutors are questioning a local judge's decision to dismiss a jury based on race. The first two words that come to mind when you walk into the Hermitage Grand Gala are lavish and eclectic. Guests walked in on 40,000 rose petals. Talk about those awkward moments. Thank you, John Travolta. Oh my gosh. Talk about invasion of personal space. Adina Menzel handled it really well, though. You mean you don't want me to grab your chin? Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, that was fondling. That went beyond just grabbing. That was, yeah. Yeah, it was interesting. It was a good night, though. And police are in the process of talking to that caller right, right now, according to Dwight Mitchell, the spokesperson for Louisville Metro Police. Rachel Collier has been on the scene since this started at about 3.30, 3.45 this afternoon. What are you seeing now? Everything's being scaled back, a much calmer situation. Another developing story now, Jeffersonville police confirm a murder investigation. Police are not releasing many details, but say they are working with the Clark County Prosecutor's Office. From your experience, what do you know about the morale right 
right now and, and what this all means for the Cardinals. Hollywood invades Louisville for the Derby Eve Galas. WDRB's Kate Springer runs through the list of who will be attending these big parties. Hard to pick a favorite. There's so many and now more to choose from. Good deal. Well, it's 16 degrees right now, and that's going to be the high for <sighs> a while. Wind chill us. warning, which you say is pretty rare. We are following developments at Jefferson Community and Technical College, where at about 3.30, we received a word from the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office of an anonymous call from inside the building of an active shooter. Rachel Collier just told us that they had not found anything as of a few minutes ago, but she is now tweeting that SWAT just ran into the building. People are coming out with their hands up. There's been a heavy police presence there for about 45 minutes now, and we're waiting to hear from police on what the latest word is. All right. An article just posted on this, and you're working on another one right now, so continue yep. to check WDRB.com for Absolutely. more from Rick Bozich. Thank you so much, Rick. Thank you. Well, it is welcome news to drivers in Kentuckyana. Two years of construction is coming down to the final two months. Police have been scouring the building there ever since that JCTC sent out the text alert at 3.39 this afternoon. They have not told us they have found anything at this point. We are expecting an update from police at any minute, and we will, of course, stay on top of this and bring you that live. So keep it right here on WDRB for updates throughout the hour. We just did receive word from Rachel Collier via Twitter. The counselors at JCTC say they just got an all-clear message from the school. Just a few minutes ago, we saw SWAT team heavily armed heading in. Students were evacuated about 45 minutes ago, but Rachel Collier on the scene is tweeting that a counselor there says he got an all-clear message from JCTC. It is the busiest weekend of the year for private planes coming into Louisville's airport for the festivities this weekend. Atlantic Aviation says the runway will be so busy, it usually tops private air traffic during the Super Bowl. Employees expect to see 300 airplanes on Derby Day and between six to 700 throughout the weekend. The Louisville attorney known as the hammer or heavy hitter is back at work after an accident nearly claimed his life. We are still waiting to hear from Louisville Metro Police about a scare at JCTC within the last hour. There was a report of an anonymous call from inside the building of an active shooter, but the all clear was given at 423 and we've just learned 8th Street and Chestnut are back open right there surrounding JCTC here in downtown Louisville. Rachel Collier tweeting just a few minutes ago, SWAT teams are still coming out of the building. She asked them, are we hearing all clear? And they said yes so far. So the scene has calmed down tremendously since lots of police and, and helicopters were hovering around this scene. Multiple investigations going on right now. And at this hour, Katina Powell's attorney is meeting with attorneys at the University of Louisville. What could be the outcome of that meeting? What's their hope? But we have just been told Jefferson Community and Technical College is reporting the all clear. That was as of 423 today. They say the campus emergency is over. You can hear and see the party going on behind me. It promises to be a late night here at the Hermitage Grand Gala. Reporting in Goshen, I'm Elizabeth Woolsey, WDRB News.